Good morning, everyone. So I went and looked up from uh, 32, the word Manaheim, the place that Jacob named Manaheim after uh, he had made it kind of a truce treaty or a peace with uh, Laban, his uncle. And it means uh, two camps or two companies place, which, uh, you know, again, it, the way it is explained in the uh, what I looked up, it's like, oh, it's it's God where God is also kind of going. No, no, it's it's where uh, Jacob named it that uh, because there was there was a consensus, there was peace made, right? A neutral place where peace was made, right? And uh, yeah, under the guidance of God, right? then it should call be called three tents, three companies, right? But it's between those two. Right? Uh, uh, tribes almost, right? Because J Jacob now, after he left Laban, yeah, became like his own tribe. And uh, it, 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 see, it's it's a good thing to go and look up. Okay, why was why is that named that? Uh, turns out, yes, yes uh, coexisting uh, in one place together, yet as uh, separate entities in 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 a way. Uh, uh, interesting again, but again, what came with it? I'm going, no, that's not quite true, though. Why are they explaining it like this? Again, give the whole thing, <laughs> anyway. Gus wants to come in, he's been lonely out there, so I'm gonna go and open the door. We need to air out the house. I like to air out the house in the morning, though it is kind of cool. Cold. Come on, boy. Uh, my pony, a uh, pony in the house, <laughs> a miniature pony. <laughs> no, just a huge dog, huh? You're so big and you're still growing, huh? And he's so, he just loves to be petted, this, that. Here comes Jake. Jake says, I want some of that. Look, look, he's pushing him out of the way. Gus says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I already, I got this one down. I know how to get in between Mama and everybody else. Right, with I want the pads. Yeah. <laughs> One must ask. So we have four big dogs now. That's all we got left. Four big dogs. Except for Bo. They're all younger. And so there's a lot of energy always. Huh? Yes. Going around. Yeah. But we have a big house. So four big dogs. Yeah. Just have to watch them a little bit. Right? Yeah. I've got to watch them a little bit. Huh? Yeah, yeah. No, there goes Ozzy. Oh, I know what's on the table. Oh, no, 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 no. He'll pull that right off the table. No, we're not doing that. Okay. Anything else? No, okay. Peter pulled that, pulled that glass bowl right off the table just so he could lick it out. Yes, yes, I haven't I haven't cleaned the kitchen yet. I'll be next. Ooh. Ooh. Right? Yes. All right. 33. Are you going to read with me? I had to let him in, didn't I? Now i got to deal with the... Oh, no, look. It just, yeah, it's kind of interesting on how they just kind of go and take go. Then a messenger my son sent me, and it's from a, a year ago or something, but sent me this little clip of this little boy singing Don't Worry, right, by Bob Marley. Bob Marley's always been one of my favorites, too. Yeah, since I've been young. It's just that his songs just don't get old. Yep, yep, yep. I love on how he, even though, right, he kind of does sing to the whole world. But this little boy, oh, my gosh, for his age, right, spot on, you know, with... Uh, in tune with the song and his expressions. I shared it on Facebook if anybody's interested. <laughs> Anywho, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just a wonderful thing. Huh? And one of your children sends you that. That's so sweet. Ugh, I have wonderful children. Ugh. Must have done something right. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Yep. Gus, really? We have a 
a crate of just little stuff. Uh, when we cut up the wood, there's always some uh, bark and smaller pieces that split off. So we rake those up and we bring them in to start a fire with. And uh, he, he loves just going and you know, getting a piece out and just shred it. Super kindling. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they tore their bed up last night, too. <laughs> ah, it's all over the place out there. I mean, not, they just move things that where they should be. So, got to do that again, too, right? Well, it's a long night out there. Okay, all right. All right. Genesis 33. Gus, go to something else. The meeting with Esau. Oh, it's a short one. Looking up, Jacob saw Esau coming, and with him, 400 men. I wonder if they counted them. Well, hey, you know. He then divided the children between Leah and Rachel and the two slave girls. Wait a minute. Didn't he already do that on the other side of the river? Now, what the heck is this? He brought him back before Esau got there? Changed his mind? What? I thought he was all by himself. Yeah, this is the thing. Is it how things change? Just nilly-willy and I'm not supposed to notice? He put the slave girls and their children in front with Leah and her children following and Rachel and Joseph behind. Joseph, the youngest. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, wow. You know, that reminds me of something a few years ago where in, in a part of the world where there was conflict going on and, and there was a one side that put pregnant women and children in front of them so that then the ones that kind of came to liberate or you know, wouldn't, yeah, that's, wow, oh, okay, Jacob did that. Well, you know, that is so that, right? I hear that. Ozzy, what are you doing? Well, that's so that, you know, Esau sees, you know, there's children and women involved. And why didn't he put Rachel and Joseph? His most precious possessions, obviously, which again, you know, can you hang in here and there? Man, well, just in case, it would just be the slave girls and those kids, right? And then, you know, the one that he, okay, that's my wife, but not really the one I really love. And then, oh, my gosh. Oh, do people hear this? Oh, ah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then. Oh. He himself went ahead of them and bowed to the ground seven times until he reached his brother. Okay, at least he wasn't making up the total rear and kind of watching who's going to make it or not. Okay, well, that's, that's at least, you know. All right. All right, okay. Let's give him some points for that. Yeah, okay. But Esau ran to meet him, took him in his arms, threw himself on his neck, and wept as he kissed him. It's making me cry. What did I say in the other chapters? Where was Jacob's faith? God surely would not have just sent him to his death. Right? Yes? Here's Esau. So he's, we got all this other stuff. You know, beforehand, on how Jacob was just scared and full of fear and tried to figure out how do I, what do I do, how do I do it, right? To, to uh, you know, lesson Esau's, you know, still want for vengeance, and I don't know, after 20 years. And here's Esau, and he's just loving on his brother. Oh, my gosh, right? Oh, ugh. All right, yeah. 
And looking up, he saw the women and children. Who are these with you? He asked. Jacob answered, the children whom God has bestowed on your servant. <laughs> I can look at it that way. The slave girls then came up with their children, and they all bowed low. Now what if he would have had Rachel and Joseph first, or his wives and those children first? No, but yet, right? Yes, yeah, he kind of shot himself in the foot there too. Then Leah too came up with her children, and they all bowed low. Finally, Rachel and Joseph came up and bowed low. Right? Yeah, okay. Esau asked, what was the purpose of the whole camp I just met? To win my Lord's favor, he replied. Brother, I have plenty, Esau answered. Keep what is yours. And again, too, Jacob is treating his brother as, again, to have this kind of false submissive, that you're my Lord, I'm your servant. And Esau, you're my brother. Brother, I have plenty. Hmm. Jacob protested. No, if you... Have won your, if I have won your favor, please accept the gift I offer. For in fact, I have come into your presence as into the presence of God, since you have received me kindly. So accept the gift I have brought for you, since God has been generous to me and I have all I need. And he urged him and Esau accepted. Again, in a way again, right? Esau didn't want anything. Hey, we're good. I got plenty too. You keep your what is yours. Jacob could have said, then let's just begin as brothers again, right? Yes? No, but he, no, 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 you know, that I want to, again, kind of again as a, a backup. Well, I gave you, blah, 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 if in the future anything happens. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's what it is, right? Well, what, what if we were in, in this kind of situation? Right? Again, how much faith do people have? And God, how, do, how much do they trust God? And on how do, how do people perceive God, right? If you believe in an angry, vengeful God, you know, who, if you don't, then yeah, you're probably going to act like Jacob. But if not, then you're probably going to act, if you really trust God, this, you're probably going to act more like Esau. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, well, anyway. Jacob parts company with Esau. Esau said, let us break camp and move off. I shall go beside you. But Jacob replied, as my Lord knows, the children are weak and the sheep and cows which have calved make it hard for me. If they are driven too hard, even for one day, the whole drove will die. It may please my Lord to go on. He still doesn't call him his brother. To go on ahead of his servant. For my part, I shall move at a slower pace to suit the flock I am driving and the children until I join my Lord in Seir. Esau then said, At least let me leave you some of the people who are with me. What for? Well, I can answer that. Probably for, uh, for protection, Jacob asked. Please indulge me, my Lord. So that day Esau turned back towards Say here, but Jacob made his way to Sukkoth, where he built himself a house and made shelters for his livestock. That is why the place was given the name of Sukkoth. Oh, somebody else is up. So he did go with Esau. He went and made camp somewhere by himself. I think that Jacob was really distrustful person he didn't trust anyone easily maybe due to the fact right that uh you know, laban was trying to cheat him out of what should have been his this snap but again right it's about possessions and stuff well anyway yeah, it's, it's what it is jacob arrives at Se shechem Jacob arrived safely at the town of Shechem in Canaanite territory on his return from Padan Aram. He encamped opposite the town, and for 100 pieces of silver, he bought from the sons of Hamor, father of Shechem, the piece of land on which he had pitched his tent. There he erected, erected an altar which he called El, God of Israel.
Ooh. Oh, the next one I'm not going to enjoy at all. Well, anywho, there it is. All oh, Jacob's. Oh, the song goes right with it. Don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. There. That song goes right along with what I just read where God continuously is trying to let us know. You just have some faith if you're doing the right thing. I'm going to be there making sure that things around you go right. Of course, you got to do your part. Right? Jacob worked very, very hard for what he had. Right? Yes? So right? that goes with it. If you think that laying around in a lazy chair like I'm doing, <laughs> or on a couch, or you know, hanging somewhere, and you're not doing anything, you're expecting everybody else to, you know, you're doing just this. It's not even this. It's you're doing this. Make sure you're getting enough. You're getting, yeah, yeah, right? Then not doing anything for it yourself. Then don't be surprised if your hands kind of gonna stay empty as well, right? Yeah. But uh, all I can say is otherwise. Right? Kind of gives us a good look into you. Yeah? Where? How God didn't just have to restore certain things that went wrong right from the beginning, but also the, the, the trust and the faith yeah, that people should have in the creation and how everything's built up out there. And even, yeah, we're, we're created in, in the image of God. Well, there should be something within us that should know how, when our behavior is right, and we should trust that others feel the same way. So here Esau comes. Yeah, he's got his, I got 400 men with him, this snap, but I don't know. And, uh, and then, you know, when he says, I'm going to leave some of my men with you, most likely to protect him, to protect all of Jacob's right? people, his tribe, this snap, make sure his brother's going to make it safe the rest of the way. Yeah. He didn't expect that. But again, God already knew. And if Jacob, with the messages that he got from God, where to go, not time to leave, you need to go back there, that's not, she should have known right, that Esau was prepared for him in the positive. Right? Yes? Again, yeah. that's why we can't, and if you live in the same nation, one shouldn't be the enemy of another person in the same nation. That doesn't make sense. I'm not saying that when people do wrong things that justice doesn't have its place. Right? Yeah. But yeah, when it comes down to it, to be influenced by hearsay, this snap of others, and then, and then, uh, huh? suddenly we see an enemy in everyone. Then, huh? yes, okay. Oh. Got to trust God, right? Yes, okay. Well, that's what I wanted to share this morning. These two need to go out. He has a. Uh, uh, adapted again a little bit. His Jake has uh, his uh, obsession of sticks, right? Yeah. So we have a little bit uh, growling going on. Gus goes, well, I don't know what he's doing. He's not scared of him, though. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> God's love and blessings always. And may he protect you. Please trust God in your life. Do your part and trust God that everything will be all right. Everyone will be all right. And I will talk to you all another time.